Doctor, we've talked a lot about uh, prescription medications that have, that have been given to kids for, for behavioral disorders. Uh, when I was in school, we didn't hear much about that. We also didn't have any school shootings either, and there's been a rash of those. Is there a connection, do you think, between the two, those prescription drugs and what we've seen lately in the news? The answer is absolutely yes. Um, I've seen more than, and, and clinically gotten involved with 10,000 cases of behavior disorders. And, and I've, I've studied more than 800 felons, people convicted of a felony, and I've studied the, the chemistry of of, um, of mass murderers and serial killers and uh, people who've done some terrible things. And I've, I've done forensic studies with medical examiners and coroners. And um, most of the, I would say 95% of the behavior disordered kids, kids and adults that we've seen, uh, it was clear they had a problem by the time they were six years old. This doesn't usually develop when they're older. It usually comes right at, early on, sometimes by the time they're two or three years old and they find them torturing the family pet or fascination with fire or they're oppositional and they're defiant. School shooters are different. They are different. And uh, I've looked at, at 50 school shootings since 1990. And in looking at these 50 cases where uh, what happened in nearly every case is that they had normal okay behavior in their formative years. They were okay until they were about 14 or 15. And then these kids, most of them, developed anxiety or depression. Family took them to a psychiatrist or a doctor, uh, other doctor, and they were given an uh, SSRI antidepressant, Paxil, Prozac, Zoloft, uh, one of this family of serotonin-enhancing medications. Well, uh, these are, and, and so for the case of the school shooters, um, although many people improve and do well on these medications, they, these particular people got worse. Mm. Now in my book, Nutrient Power, um, we know there are five completely different phenotypes or types of depression, biotypes of depression. One of the five types, which is 20% of all people with depression, based on our database, uh, they actually have too much serotonin activity to begin with. And they're the ones who get worse on, on these SSRI medications. And anybody who buys an antidepressant at a, at a, or gets one at a, at a prescription filled at a, at a pharmacy, what uh, there's an insert in there warning about that this could cause um, uh, violence or suicidal ideation, in, mm -hmm. a, and especially in teenage boys. And that's because uh, some of these, a, a small percentage of them, have this dramatic, awful reaction. So. I've written a, a paper, uh, and I've sent this out to a lot of people. It's, it's a recommendation for stopping school shootings because it's not going to be solved quickly by getting rid of the guns, and it's not going to be solved quickly by identifying mentally ill people who shouldn't be near guns. I mean, that would take forever. Uh, but we could fix this problem quickly if, if the doctors, the psychiatrists and other doctors who prescribe antidepressants, if they would simply do a little blood work first and identify the people who should not be getting them, it only costs about 80 bucks, $80, to uh, do the lab work required to identify these people. Mm. See, right now, when a, when, a, when a person with depression goes to a doctor, they usually don't do any blood work, whatever. They simply listen to the symptoms and then decide which, which, which drug to give them. It's almost a trial and error procedure in many cases. It's not a, quite enough science in it. Uh, I think that, that uh, the, we now have the technology available for, for, for um, quickly ending school shootings just by being careful who we give the medication to, who we give the antidepressants to.